Are you seeing triple? Because did I not just publish two unboxings today? Well, today is my third video. Merry Christmas. Here's my gift to you. This unboxing is super special to me. I have been thinking of this bag for so, so many years. I did get this bag off Vestia Collective. Um, I have already opened it, you know, because I've been really busy. So really today what I have is a reveal. Although I have not used this bag yet and the Vestia Collective tag is still on. And are you ready? I'm going to take it out of his box. Da -da -da -da! <laughs> so this is the Fendi Baby Spy Bag. It was really big in the early 2000s, I think. And of course, the bigger Fendi Spy Bag was like, you know, iconic. It had its own cult following. Lots of celebrities were wearing the larger version. And when I was young, I actually owned an inspired bag from a high fashion brand, the name of which I don't even remember. When I saw that inspired Fendi spy bag, I just fell in love with it immediately. At that time, I had no idea that the designer version existed. I just looked at the one that was in store. There was no sort of logos on it. Um, and I was really young at the time, potentially teenage or my early 20s. And I remember paying approximately 70 Australian dollars for the bag back then. And I remember because it was very expensive for me to pay that price for a bag back then. But I literally could not leave the store. So I just purchased it. I did use the bag a lot. Now, the larger size Fendi Spy bag does come with like a spy container. I can't remember what it's called, but that was the reason it was called the spy bag because apparently you could open it and put like messages inside. But anyway, that was what it was called. The hardware on that spy compartment or spy container, that was really sharp and it scratched me a little bit. Despite that, I continued to use the bag so much because I just loved how it looked and I used it till the handles tore off. <laughs> So that was that. And it was only years later that I discovered that it was actually a bag from Fendi years and years ago. <laughs> so since then, I've kind of always wanted to have the real thing. In any case, I did feel that the larger size bag was kind of too big for me. I don't really have a need for a bag that size anymore. Not that I don't need big bags, but I have enough big bags at the moment that um, I don't need to buy another big one. And I'm always a little bit worried about the weight of the bag as well. So the other option was to go for the Fendi Spy bag. Now, I guess before I continue the story time, because it's getting really long, let me just show you the bag first. It's same on both sides. So that's how it looks on one side. That's the side of the bag. And let's call this the back of the bag. And the other side of the bag, it's got these two top handles that are thick and chunky and they are braided. They are sewn directly onto the bag without any hardware. It's got this nice sort of stitching detail on here. It is a zip it closure. On the inside, we got the Fendi Zucker print and that is a fabric. The zipper pull is made of this leather tab and that's nice and chunky. It does say Fendi on the zipper pull. And here in the hardware, it is engraved with Fendi as well. The stitching, uh, surprisingly, there is not a single popped stitch. And that's just insane for the age of this bag. I mean, if you think about Chanel, the stitches pop like straight away. <laughs> So although I've been eyeing this bag for a long time, I never committed to it because I knew that this was not... <laughs> I was going to say it was not going to fit on my shoulder, but uh, hello, <laughs> it does fit on my shoulder. But every time I see someone carrying it, and I also actually asked Amelia from Fluffed Up Affair. She also has a luxury YouTube channel and she does own this bag. I did ask her and say, can you actually fit it on your shoulder? And she said, no, you actually can't. But sure, it just gets on my shoulder. It's a really tight squeeze, but um, most people do carry it on the crook of the arm and it's, you know, a really easy fit for me. I already own the Birkin 25 and I bought that bag knowing that it's purely going to be handheld or potentially just crook of the arm or on the forearm carry kind of bag. And I know that I don't need to torture myself with so many handbags that are very inconvenient to carry. And for that reason, I stayed away from the baby spy bag. And one fine day, I don't know why I never noticed this before, but there are these leather tabs on either sides of the bag. Look, look. And then it made me realize, oh my gosh, I can actually get some D-rings and stick it in and then put my own strap on. Or worse comes to worse, I can actually braid some twillies or some long skinny silk scarves that are not from Hermes and uh, thread them through here. And voila, I will be able to have a shoulder carry bag. And I'm like, oh my gosh, let's do it. And... <laughs> And that was when I started hunting for a Fendi spy bag for myself. Now, although this bag is not 
new, certainly widely available on the pre-loved market. Because of my low buy year that I'm trying to commit to this year, I didn't want to pay too much for this bag anyway. So yeah, that's why I kind of just looked at these bags and passed on them. But this one turned up one day on Vessi Collective and I was like, let me tell you the price. So this was listed for about 197 Australian dollars and I have never seen a Fendi spy bag listed for so low unless it was like completely torn apart and usually this leather tab is missing and you just have the piece of hardware hanging there on its own um and I was like wow the price is really good usually it's priced around 500 to 600 Australian dollars and I've never seen a price so good it was from a seller in Japan I mean I looked at the photos this bag does have a bit of wear and tear. I did kind of expect that based on the price. When I looked at the photos, I thought they looked better than I expected, but I knew that for the price, I could be getting a completely junk bag. And I decided to just take that risk anyway and take it from there. And I thought it would come like totally stinking of something, but it actually doesn't. The condition, sure, the leather is a little bit worn and let me take you through that. Paint on the leather has come off a little bit in lots of lots of areas. So uh, over there, over there, and really all over the bag. So on this side, a lot of the paint has come off. Um, the paint has come off these bits as well. And on the other side, there's like, you know, paint that's come off there and paint that's come off there. There is a lot of wear on the pool tab itself. So a lot of paint has come off there as well. Um, and there certainly lots of rubbing and over there as well. So although the photos did not look as bad as I expected, based on the price, there was a risk I could just be getting a bag that I would throw in the bin. <laughs> so thank goodness it's not that bad. With that really good price, I actually still tried to negotiate with the seller, but they didn't budge. They were friendly, but they didn't budge on the price, which was fine. Obviously, as a bargain hunter, I love haggling. It's just my thing when I shop secondhand that's part of the thrill for me but i guess what pushed me over to bite the bullet was vessia collective ran an offer where shipping was free and for me shipping from japan is 60 australian dollars so that is a huge saving in itself so for that reason i went ahead and purchased the bag the total i paid for this bag uh with taxes and free shipping was 226 dollars and 74 cents i really cannot complain the other thing was with the listing it looks like the bag was more of a brown bag but it was listed as burgundy so it's actually come as a bit purple <laughs> so yeah lots of surprises with this purchase but you know it was going to be semi-exciting where like literally it was a gamble i'll pay for it and we'll see what we get <laughs> i'm actually very pleased with what i got and what i'm going to do is that i will send it off for a spa to get it you know repaint it or refurbish or something like that and i will show you the end result once that happens in terms of measurements of the bag at the widest point it measures 35 centimeters the height is 23 centimeters at its maximum and depth is approximately 12 centimeters the handle drop is 12 centimeters I absolutely love this. I love the egg shape of the bag and I think it's so unique. There's really nothing like it. It is really iconic. Some people don't like it, I know. Jessie, I remember saying that she thinks this is like a troll bag. It must be like, what is it? It's like a troll leather. Like, it's like they killed a troll and made it into a bag. <laughs> because the because of how gross the grain is, she thinks like this might be troll leather. <laughs> I don't mind. It is perfect for my function in terms of size. I really like double top handles and also a zippered opening as well. So I am super, super pleased with this. Okay, so now let's move on to some mod shots. So this is she, and this is what she looks like handheld. And crook of the arm. Oh, she's so cute. She's so easy to access. I am um, very happy with this bag. Can I carry it on my shoulder? Yeah, just barely. There you go, there you go. Now, if you like handbag collection videos, I'm going to leave my 2022 handbag collection video on screen for you to watch. I have not yet filmed my 2023 handbag collection video, but I shall be doing that soon. I hope you're having a wonderful Christmas so far, and I will see you in the new year.